Hello there and welcome back to the channel. What a week it's been for DJI and FPV. Not only have we had the release of the new DJI Goggles Integra, the long rumoured cheaper version of FPV Goggles for 03, we've also had an updated version of the DJI Love Toy and new firmware for the Avata 03 and other parts of the system that not only finally gives us support for the Betaflight HDOSD, but they're even giving users the ability to remove their personal data as well from the onboard storage. Who would have thought? What I want to do today, though, is just walk you through what's going on this week. Now, just to be clear, I don't have the new goggles yet. They are en route to me. I will have them tomorrow. I'll be talking about them on the weekend and Sunday's night's live stream. So if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Now, in this one, I just want to walk you through what is actually going on because there is a bit to discuss here and there's been a huge amount of controversy around these new goggles and the fact that they've got GPS built in. And I want to share with you my thoughts on that as well. Now, to start, we're going to talk about the new goggles light or what are officially called the D. DJI Goggles Integra. Now these are an updated version or a downgraded version or a newer version, whichever way we want to say this, of the original Goggles 2. The real important thing up front though is that they are cheaper. In fact, they're about $150 cheaper in the US. They do still support all the same systems as the original Goggles. So they work with O3, they work with the Avata, and they work with the original ear units when using that new firmware. If we just hop over to the desktop, you'll be able to see the price of these new Goggles here at $499, and you can see that they are very similar looking in shape and design, but there is some big visual differences too, which is this big block on the back. This is the built-in battery. So rather than have a separate battery, DJI have now integrated the battery into this head strap at the back, very similar to what they've done in the past with the goggles white or the goggles RE, something very similar to what we've seen before. There are also some other big changes as well, which I'll walk you through. So if I come back to there, we have new overall shell with a couple of little changes. The touchpad is gone and has been replaced by a joystick. The LED pad is gone as well. There is also changes to the optic system. You no longer have built-in focus adjustment and they now have fixed focus lenses and DJI include multiple different lenses in the box. Also, as a result of the optics changes, the field of view has been reduced as well. It's dropped from 51 degrees on the Goggles 2 to 44 degrees on the Goggles Integra. It's going to be really interesting to see what that change actually manifests like because many people, including me, struggled with the optics on the Goggles 2 and actually the smaller field of view might be a little bit better. Up front, I like big field of view goggles, but I want to try it before commenting. And again, it's something that's going to be interesting to see how it really turns out. The real interesting thing about these new goggles is there's a number of things that DJI have taken off, including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but they've also added a feature as well. And that is they have added GPS. Now, this GPS has caused quite a bit of controversy. Officially, it's been added to allow the new Goggles Integra to work with the Avata when used in the US in a remote ID area without having to connect up your smartphone. So currently, US users, if they want to fly with their remote ID firmware, they end up having to plug in their phone so it's got a position lock on the pilot. Whereas now, with the Goggles Integra, you will no longer have to do that. Unfortunately, though, this has caused quite a stir in the FPV community, with many speculating on what DJI is going to do with that GPS module with O3, and are they suddenly going to be putting remote ID on O3? Now, I just want to be clear on the differences between O3 and the Avata and remote ID. DJI do not have a remote ID module in the Avata. DJI's radio system, OcuSync 3 Plus, OcuSync 3, is an SDR that is programmable to do whatever DJI wanted to do. They are able to program that SDR to transmit the video and the control like we have, but they can also tell it to transmit remote ID packets, and that is what they've done on the Avata. However, 
As far as we know, there are no remote ID packets being transmitted from O3, and the fact that these new goggles have a GPS module does not mean DJI are suddenly going to be turning on remote ID on O3 as well. There really is no reason to link the new goggles Integra having GPS to the fact that DJI is suddenly going to be transmitting remote ID on O3. They can absolutely update the firmware to turn on O3 if they wanted to, but you would have to choose to update that firmware and they would have to put that in the release notes or there would be frankly uproar. You would not be forced into taking that firmware and even if they did do it, you would still have that option to not upgrade. But let's be clear here and now in saying that there is no evidence that DJI intend to turn on a remote ID on O3 at all. And the very fact that there is GPS in these new goggles does not mean it is any more likely. It makes complete sense, in my opinion, for DJI to build a GPS in, allowing them a much better user experience with the likes of the Avata. Now, these new goggles are very interesting because they are massively cheaper than the goggles too. And in my opinion, that saving is a lot more than the bomb or the savings that they'd have had on the changes they've made. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how they perform when they arrive. They still have all of the main features we want from these goggles. They have the 1080p OLED displays, fully support O3, the DVR is built in, it's got that new software. It has all of the good bits of O3 and really what DJI have done is tried to make them a much better user experience. You've got that built-in battery on the back now. You've got that GPS to make it easier to use with the Avata if you're in an O3 rid area and Overall, they've improved them in little bits, like getting rid of the touchpad. I hated the touchpad. So it's going to be interesting for me to see how it is. As I've already mentioned, that reduction in field of view as well is going to upset some people. But let's be all honest, the optics on these goggles were not great, and it could actually be a benefit, and I'm looking forward to testing it for myself. Overall, right now, the goggles Integra look like a really good option for people who want to get into O3. Now, these new goggles obviously do beg the question on what is going to happen with the FPV goggles version 2. Reality is, officially, we don't know, but in my opinion, these new goggles mean the end of the goggles 2, so if you are interested in getting a set of the V2s, I would strongly suggest going to get them. As what it means for the goggles 2 themselves, we don't know, do I think DJI will keep both running? Yes, for quite some time, but I do think the Integra could become the main goggle overall moving forward. So overall, what we have with the new goggles Integra is a more consumer-friendly product, in my opinion. They've removed the wires from the situation, so they've got that built-in battery now, which means there's no cable to that. You don't need the cable to your phone when using it with the Avata for RID because it's got the GPS. They've taken away things many people won't use, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the LED pad on the side. They've made improvements like getting rid of the touchpad because most people hated it and put in a joystick. And whilst they have done some cost savings on the optics and move to that fixed focus lens, it does mean they are much cheaper at $150 roughly saving. The only real downside for me with them is that reduction in field of view and it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. But what you're getting is a goggle that still has all of the main features that the goggles 2 had. They work with O3E unit, they work with the Vata, they still have 1080p OLEDs, they have all the main stuff with just one or two little downsides, but they could end up being a much better buy overall. Alongside the release of the goggles Integra, there is also a new love toy called the Motion 2 that has a number of new features specifically for your flying pleasure. For instance, it has a much more sensual trigger that has a really nice tight gap that you can get your finger in. And not only now can you precisely control how fast you go in, but you can control how fast you come out as well. You also now have a joystick on the back instead of this button, so instead of smashing away as hard as you can to go, you can now slowly and smoothly rub that joystick until you get to the point of no return.
You also have a new control on the side that allows you to rub it up and down, giving you that additional side control. And overall, they really improved how well that you can hold this in your hand, how tight you can grip it. And again, I have ordered one of these and I will be talking about this on the channel on the weekend on the After Hours show. Now, alongside the hardware, we've also had some software updates as well, and these do bring some of the features people have been waiting for. For instance, we finally have HDOSD support in the DJI system. Now, this HDOSD support works on the O3 ear unit and the original ear units when using them on that O3 firmware. It works on the goggles too and the V2 goggles as well, but it does not work on the original FPV system on the original FPV modes. It is only for that that new O3 style mode that you have on the goggles too. They do though add the ability to have that HDOSD on the goggles V2 when using the O3, but you can't have that HDOSD on the ear unit in Vista with the V2s. You can only have the HDOSD on the ear unit in Vista when using them with the goggles too on that O3 firmware. DJI also added the ability for you to remove your user data from on board the aircraft. Now there has been someone whinging about this in recent times and DJI appear to have listened and finally have given users the ability to delete it. So I want to say a massive thank you from me to DJI for doing this. I think it's great to hear them take feedback, hear them, see them take feedback from the community and implement it. They've done the right thing here. And whilst I'm the first to be critical of when they do something wrong, I will also be the first to say when they do something right. So that's it. New goggles, new love toy, new firmware. Now, my goggles Integra will be here tomorrow. To get these, I've ended up having to order a whole Avata pack because I couldn't get the goggles to alone. Sorry, goggles Integra alone. However, I will be probably selling the Avata from that kit. So if you're interested in an Avata, please reach out to me. Also, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you from me to all of my Patreons. I would not have been able to order any of this gear without the support of my Patreons. I intend to be sharing with you my thoughts on the new goggles Integra on the weekend, and I would not be able to do this without the support of the community. So if you want to help us to keep making content like this, my older content, and what I'm going to be making in the future, please do consider checking it out. But a massive thank you from me. Would not be able to keep going without all of you amazing folks. Anyway, I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts. Please do let me know what you think in the comments section. I'll be updating you when the goggles come soon. Don't worry about RID. It's not coming. No one has said it is. The GPS is just a GPS module. No need to run out and get tinfoil hat quite yet. Anyway, stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.